Christian Cage defeats Luchasaurus and Darby Allen to become the brand new TNT champion last night on AEW Collision. Brian Danielson face off against absolute Ricky Starks in a Texas death match. Several title matches have been added to the AEW Wrestle Dream pay-per-view next weekend. Rob Van Dam wins on his return to AEW in-ring action last night on Collision. FTR attain the tag team titles and get approached and confronted by Aussie Open. PCO is leaving Impact Wrestling, giving notice to the company that he is going to depart at the end of his contract. Luke Gallows is out of action through injury after getting his knee scoped. Hulk Hogan gets married, brother. MJF and Adam Cole, a segment has been announced for Dynamite this week. Andrade Al Elo versus Juice Robinson is announced for Collision next week. Plus, Adam Cole is set to compete in his first indie match in quite some time. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about Christian Cage, because now officially, despite carrying around the championship title for quite some time, he is now officially the brand new AEW TNT champion. Grand Rapids, Michigan was the site of last night's AEW collision on TNT, and it featured a major three-way match pitting champion Luchasaurus defending his title against his mentor Christian Cage and Darby Allen. The trio have had their issues as of late, with Cage repeatedly interjecting himself in Darby's dealings with his friend and rookie Nick Wayne. Cage has distinguished also himself in recent weeks by referring to himself as the TNT champion, in spite of the fact that Luchasaurus was actually the person who held the title. Needless to say, while it was billed as a three-way match, in actuality it was more like a handicap match as Cage and Luchasaurus worked together from the very beginning and Darby was without Sting who was barred from ringside. At one point in the match, Luchasaurus finally took possession of his own championship with the crowd chanting, that's your bout. Christian Cage and Luchasaurus had words with each other that distracted Luchasaurus enough for Darby to quickly take advantage. Darby delivered a coffin drop from the top rope and went for the cover. However, Cage picked up Allen and threw him out Outside before covering Luchasaurus and winning the TNT Championship. After the match, there was yet another intense stare down between Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. However, after a few seconds, Cage and Luchasaurus embraced and eventually left the ring together. Backstage, Tony Schiavone interviewed Cage and Luchasaurus and notified them that the TNT Championship would be on the line in a two out of three falls match at the AEW Wrestle Dream pay per view event on October 1st. So, what are your thoughts on Christian Cage becoming the TNT Champion? Is this a sign that the rumors and reports that AEW are very high on Christian Cage work right now? proving to be true and where do you think this is going do you think this means that Darby Allen will win the title from Christian Cage or do you think it's setting the seeds and planting the seeds for a Christian Cage versus Luchasaurus feud in the future let me know your thoughts about that our last night's show also featured a Texas death match between the American Dragon Brian Danielson and Absolute Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks and Danielson turned up the heat in their rivalry last night with a Texas death match. The rivalry began after Starks hit Ricky the Dragon Steamboat with a bout, leading to Steamboat to bring in Brian Danielson to wrestle Starks at All Out. Danielson won that strap match, but Starks scored the victory in last week's tag team match. Last night's match would be the tiebreaker. Starks quickly attacked Danielson before the bell. Soon the action spilled into the crowd. At one point, Starks threw Danielson into the front row. When Danielson was finally able to get out of the front row, Starks dived on him from the ring, sending both of them back into the front row. Danielson regained control and took the match back to the ring. However, it didn't stay there very long. Back on the outside, Starks hit Danielson with the ring bell, which left him with a cut. He continued working on the cut, but also took a chair and began attacking Danielson's legs. Later, Starks went under the ring and found the strap from their all-out match, which he used to hit Danielson. Starks then found a chain and wrapped it around his fist before striking Danielson. He also used it in a choking manner similar to the way Danielson used the strap at All Out. However, Danielson got up before the 10 count. Starks went for a spear, but Danielson dodged and hooked on the label lock while also using the chain to choke Starks like he did at All Out. However, Starks Starks powered out this time. 
Danielson delivered a high knee to a chair that was in front of Stark's face, bursting open Starks, who began spitting blood. He followed that up with another knee, this time wrapped in the chain to Starks' head. Starks was unable to answer the 10 count, and therefore Danielson got the victory. What were your thoughts on that Texas death match, and where do you think this leads this feud to go from here? Do you think that Starks and Danielson are done? Do you think we'll see a continuation of this feud? How is it going to factor in to Brian Danielson's big match at Wrestle Dream next weekend against Zack Sabre? Jr. Speaking of Wrestle Dream, more title matches have been announced for the pay per view event next weekend. On last night's AEW Collision, multiple championship matches have been added to the card of AEW Wrestle Dream 2023. Eddie Kingston appeared in a video package challenging Kachisori Shibata to a match, noting that he would put both his recently won Ring of Honor World Championship and the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship on the line against the Ring of Honor Pure Champion Shibata. The match was made official shortly thereafter. Elsewhere on collision, as I mentioned, shortly after Christian Cage won the TNT Championship, he was met by Tony Schiavone in a backstage interview segment. Shivani revealing that during the commercial break, Tony Khan had made it official that Cage would defend his TNT Championship at Wrestle Dream against Darby Allen in a two out of three falls match. Later in the show, a challenge for the TBS Championship was waged by Julia Hart, so she will challenge Chris Statlander at the October 1st pay-per-view as well. Also confirmed after they won a number one contenders match on Friday's episode of Rampage, the Righteous will challenge MGF and Adam Cole for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships at Wrestle Dream, so it appears that Adam Cole will be cleared to return by them. Details on another match that Adam Cole seemingly is cleared for as well. In a new non-championship match for Wrestle Dream, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, and Kota Ibushi versus the Don Callis family of Konosuke Takeshita, Sammy Guevara, and the mystery opponent who was revealed later to be none other than Will Ospreay was confirmed for Wrestle Dream 2. Later in the show, a four-way tag team number one contender match was announced for the Wrestle Dream event between the Young Bucks, Hook and Orange Cassidy, the Lucha Bros, and Austin and Colton Guns as well. So plenty of matches being announced for the show. What are your thoughts on those matches? Are you excited? about Wrestle Dream? Are you interested? Let me know if you're uh, interested or excited for that event next weekend. Now, last night's collision also featured the return of Rob Van Dam to in-ring competition in All Elite Wrestling in his home state of Michigan. And RVD, uh, certainly as I mentioned, made a big splash, I guess pun intended, last night uh, on collision. Rob Van Dam made his AW return last night on collision, teaming with Hook to defeat Daddy Magic and Call Hand Ange. Jake Hager also attempted to interfere at one point, only to get hit by the Van Daminator. Hook locked in the red rum on Ange while RVD hit the five-star frog splash on Daddy Magic for the pinfall victory. As was noted on commentary, Rob Van Dam teamed with Taz at last night's venue, the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan, on August 27, 2001, against Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho. Last night, he teamed with Taz's son. The match went better than that one did for RVD, who, uh, where his team lost on that night's episode of Monday Night Raw. Uh, do you think this will lead to more for Rob Van Dam in the future? Of course, there have been some sort of disputing reports suggesting if he has, is signed to a Legends contract with WWE, if he's going to be involved with the promotion or involved in something when it comes to next year's WrestleMania event in Philadelphia, of course, the home of ECW. So where do you think this one is going? And we spoke about a number one contenders match for the tag team titles at Wrestle Dream. The tag team titles will also be on the line uh, on the line at the event as well as they were last night on AEW Collision. Last week was a fairly eventful AEW Collision for FTR, the reigning AEW World Tag Team Champions. They not only successfully defended their titles, but they also came away from the show with two new challenges to their championships. The first team to step forward on that night was the Work Horsemen, while Aussie Open challenged them to a title match at Wrestle Dream later on in the evening. Last night in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the champions defended their titles against the Work Horsemen. In a competitive bout with the Aussie Open at ringside doing commentary, FTR successfully defended their titles against the underdog Work Horsemen tag team. The challengers lived up to their name and at one point scored a near fall off a moonsault. However, FTR was able to secure the victory when Dax Howard applied the sharpshooter. Following the match, the Aussie Open tag team left the broadcast table and entered the ring to address FTR. Aussie Open admitted that they may not have yet lived up to their fullest potential, but they added that they would be ready to do so when the team square off at WrestleDream. Howard told them to bring their best or don't even bother showing up and left Aussie Open in the ring. Who do you think 
will leave Wrestle Dream as the tag team champions. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Now, switching gears from AEW to Impact Wrestling, and we got news of a departure possibly from the Impact Wrestling roster because veteran wrestler PCO is reportedly leaving Impact Wrestling, according to Pat LaPrade. LaPrade shared the news via the X platform, formerly known as Twitter, noting that, quote, sources very close to the situation, which might actually be PCO, confirmed that he has given his notice to the promotion and his contract is ending on October 30th. PCO made his debut with other members of the then stable Honor No More at the Hard to Kill pay per view in January 2022. During his time with the company, PCO had feuds with Bully Ray, Steve Macklin, and Eddie Edwards, who he had a last rights match with uh, at this past April at Rebellion. PCO last wrestled during a Feast or Fired match at the Impact 1000 episode special that was taped on September 9 at the Westchester County Center in White Plains, New York. The night before, on September 8, at the Victory Road pay-per-view, the 55-year-old defeated Bully Ray in an Anything Goes match. While in Impact, PCO didn't win titles, but that doesn't mean he wasn't given opportunities either. This past June, against all odds, he was part of the 841 um, World Title Number One Contendership match. While in February at No Surrender, he wrestled in another World Title Number One Contender match against Macklin, Brian Myers, and Heath. Before going to Impact, PCO was working in Ring of Honor prior to the promotion being owned by AEW CEO Tony Khan. It's worth mentioning that PCO's pro wrestling career has spanned over 30 years, though it was a career resurgence in recent years that has made him arguably more popular than ever. So. The question becomes, where will PCO go next? Where do you think he will go next now that he's not going to be in Impact Wrestling? Let me know your thoughts about what you think PCO's future looks like in pro wrestling. A bit of an update when it comes to Luke Gallows and an injury that's kept him on the shelf for a little while. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, of course, Luke, uh, Luke Gallows has been absent from WWE television as of late. On the September 22nd episode of SmackDown, Gallows was not seen on screen, while Carl Anson expressed sincere concern about AJ Styles' well-being, and Mia Yim did not beat up the bloodline. The previous week, Michael Cole mentioned that Gallows was injured. Gallows has not wrestled in over a month, last teaming with the OC at a live events in Canada. Fightful has been told that Gallows had to get his knee scoped and would miss about six weeks. However, Fightful will say they don't know when the knee was actually scoped, so they don't have details on if it's a six-week timetable from then, from now, or somewhere in between. Of course, if there's any more information on that, we'll of course let you know. But best wishes go out to Gallows. Hopefully, he makes a fast and quick recovery from his injury. A bit of news on WWE Hall of Famer Hulk Hogan as well, because he's tied the knot for the third time as he is now married, brother. Congratulations are in order for Hulk Hogan, who has gotten married, according to an exclusive report from TMZ. According to the report, Hulk Hogan married his bride Sky Daly in an intimate Florida ceremony that was attended by only their closest family. The ceremony occurred at a Baptist church with a pastor performing the ceremony in front of Sky's children and Nick Hogan on behalf of the Hulkster, Hulkster as a witness. According to TMZ, Brooke Hogan was unavailable to attend on such short notice. The pair had a relatively brief engagement, having made their big announcement that they were planning to wed over the summer. Hulk Hogan announced in July that he had gotten engaged to Sky Daily at a restaurant in Florida, with sources telling TMZ that the pair just couldn't wait to get hitched. Hogan last appeared on WWE television on the Raw 30th anniversary celebration alongside Jimmy Hart, where they opened the show. So congratulations go out to Hulk Hogan, who has tied the knot. Uh, Dynamite on Wednesday will feature a segment with the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, MGF and Adam Cole. A segment featuring Adam Cole and MGF will take place next Wednesday on Dynamite. Cole and MGF will appear prior to their Ring of Honor World Tag Team title match at Wrestle Dream next Sunday. The Righteous won a four-way number one contenders match on Friday's uh, Rampage Grand Slam defeating the Hardys, Best Friends, and the Kingdom in said four-way match. MJF is also coming off a World Championship defense, successfully defending the title against Samoa Joe at the Grand Slam edition of Dynamite. Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale has also been added. The match was originally scheduled for Saturday's collision. However, shortly before the show started, it was revealed that Hart had attacked Nightingale backstage and was sent to the hospital as a result, putting Nightingale out of the match. Hart instead defeated Kira Hogan. It was later announced that Hart would be facing T champion Chris Statlander at WrestleDream. 
a four-way match pitting Penta, Alzera Miedo, Matt Jackson, Orange Cassidy, and Colton Gunn, or uh, Austin Gunn rather, will also take place. This is prior to the team's four-way match at Wrestle Dream next Sunday, where the winner will earn an AEW World Tag Team title match at any point as well. Speaking of matches set for next week's shows on AEW television, a match has been announced for AEW Collision next week as well, featuring two Collision-specific stars. A match between Andrade, Al Idolo, and Juice Robinson is set for next week's episode of Collision. The go-home show for Wrestle Dream will see Andrade, Al Idolo, face Juice Robinson after Idolo attempted to defeat Jay White in a singles match on Saturday. However, constant interference from other members of Bullet Club Gold prevented that from happening. White managed to score the win after Robinson blasted Idolo with a plaque. The best friends will also face the Kingdom. Both members of the Kingdom on Collision on Saturday night blamed best friends for costing them a chance at the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles at Rampage Grand Slam on Friday. They said... Um, they would prove that they really aren't best friends in honor of Neck Health Awareness Month. The Kingdom in recent weeks have aligned themselves with Roderick Strong, who has felt betrayed by Adam Cole's newfound association with MJF. Finally, speaking of Adam Cole, he's returning to the indie scene in a rare independent pro wrestling match. His first since probably, what, 2017, something like that. Adam Cole is coming to Deadlock Pro. Chris Danger was cutting a promo during a Deadlock Pro event on Saturday when the screen blacked out. Adam Cole appeared and informed Danger that he had some unfortunate news. He accepted Danger's challenge and the match would take place on November 12. Cole said that since Danger wants his first pro wrestling match against Cole, he's been thrown right in the fire and we'll find out if he can handle being burned. Danger said he'd walk through fire on November 12. Cole signed with AEW shortly after his WWE departure, where he is currently one half of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions with MJF. They were successful in defending their titles most recently at AEW All Out, defeating the Dark Order. At Dynamite Grand Slam, Cole jumped off the stage platform to help MJF against Samoa Joe, landing awkwardly in the process and having to visit the hospital. It's currently not known how severely injured he is, or if he's injured at all, or how long he'll be out of action, but he's committed seemingly to wrestling at Wrestle Dream next weekend and of course committed to wrestling this match in November as well. But there you go guys, this is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button, be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll speak for you again very very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.